This is part three in a series of videos in which I'm attempting to repair this IBM 5120. And yes, the owner has decided that um, he wants me to proceed and attempt to restore this. It's going to be a much bigger job than we initially thought. If you see the previous video, then you'll see why. Normally I don't charge my time when I'm doing something like this, otherwise, of course, the cost would be prohibitive. There are many hours of work just to clean this up. Uh, let alone get it working. There are unfortunately many things that can trip us up in restoring one of these and I'll come to what they are in a later video but the first step is to get it to the point where we can at least get this um, reassembled and, and start to try and apply some power to it but there's a long way to go before we can do that. The first step when I approach something like this is to start from the chassis and work my way up and that's what I will do here. I'll just spin this round so we can have a quick look inside and just see what condition it's in. Okay, so as we can see, it's extremely dirty. Um, this is the best part of the machine, this is the cleanest part, but uh, even so it's uh, absolutely filthy in here. No idea how it's managed to get this dirty. It's, uh, it is a bit unusual to see something quite this bad. But uh, the first thing I'll do is get all the uh, hardware out of here and uh, strip it down to just the um, bare plastic chassis. I won't remove the front bezel, um, it, it's not broken, doesn't need removing. I do need to remove the uh, metal plates, metalware, um, the keyboard and the bracketry. Uh, I won't remove this as I say because it's held on with a little, little um, spring clip. If you try and get these off most likely you'll snap the plastic posts off the bezel and it doesn't need to come off anyway. Once I've got it stripped down, we'll have a quick look at it uh, and then I'll take it into the workshop and get it cleaned up. So this is what is inside the keyboard, um, just as filthy as the rest of it. And um, I will need to make up a, a, a new dust sheet. This one's going to disintegrate when I try and get it apart. We'll have a close look at the keyboard in another video. Incidentally, if anyone knows where I can get a B key from, um, obviously we've got a key missing. Um, so if anyone's got one or knows where I can find one, then uh, please leave a comment. Um, I'll finish dismantling this and then um, we'll have a look at uh, the bare chassis. Okay, that's the chassis dismantled. It's in reasonable condition. There will be some scuffs left. I won't do anything about these other than clean it up. Um, it's in good condition in terms of its... Um, it's not broken, it's not cracked, it, as you uh, have seen needs a lot of cleaning but it's not too bad. Um, this is as far as I'm going to dismantle it. In theory I could pop these um, disk drive uh, bezels out but I'm not going to do that. They should come out fairly easily. If you do want to try it you squeeze them together at these points and these should pop out. Uh, however this plastic will be very brittle so it's not really going to help me popping these out uh, to clean it up. If it was a full restoration then what I'd do is put this somewhere very warm for a few hours. This will soften this very slightly and then I would very gently e ease these out. But it's not a full restoration so I'm going to clean it with these in place. It uh, will come up still very clean, this won't be clean between the bezel and the, uh, the case but it shouldn't be that dirty uh, there anyway. But if you were doing a full restoration then you'd pop these out. Uh, so that's that bit uh, taken off and then we've got the lower part of the chassis again dirty but in reasonable condition I'm not going to take the clips off uh, there's nothing to be gained other than possibly breaking them and it's just now a case of cleaning this and uh, this then uh, gives us a basis to start uh, rebuilding the unit from the ground up uh, I'll go and get this cleaned get back on camera have a look at it and give you some idea as to how it will look once it's uh, put back together. Okay, that's the chassis given a good clean. I've um, taken it out to the workshop, given it a very good clean with um, degreaser. I've also tidied up some of the deeper scuffs. If it was a full restoration, I'd get rid of all these marks. But um, this is just really cleaning it up and making it look better but I have gotten rid of the, the deeper scratches and scuffs uh, just to make it look a bit better. So this is the, uh, the first pass. I will uh, clean it again once it's been assembled or initially assembled. 
uh, just to get any remaining residue and grease off it. Uh, I've cleaned it inside and out. There was a lot of nicotine staining on this particular chassis, uh, but then there quite often is on machines of this age. Um, Clean the bottom part of the chassis as well. This came up really nice and clean. Bit of staining on it, but um, that doesn't really matter and there's not much point trying to do anything about that. I don't want to damage the conductive coating that's on here. Uh, but it is very clean now, it um, is much better. Uh, good news with the chassis is it's not broken, it's not cracked. Uh, even the side cheeks are intact, so that's uh, good news. I've cleaned it on the underside as well, so it's nice and clean uh, on the bottom. And um, it's ready for us to start reassembling. Uh, incidentally, one of the first things I do once I've finished initial disassembly of a unit that I'm working on is I throw all the fixtures and fittings and screws into the ultrasonic bath for an hour uh, and that gets them nice and clean and ready to start reassembling. So all the screws that I need to reassemble the chassis are now nice and clean and we can start putting it back together again. So this is the starting point now for reassembly. It's going to be a very long and slow process on this because of the amount of uh, cleaning and, and possible repairs that we'll have to do. But this is the starting point. Uh, we'll get the initial chassis put back together, see how it looks, and that will give us some idea as to how it's going to appear uh, once we get it uh, up and running, if we can indeed get it up and running. So the first step is to refit the front part of the chassis. So this just slots into place. It's quite a tight fit on the uh, bottom part of the chassis. So we'll make sure it's properly located. And then we can start refitting these screws. I'll just lower the camera a bit so you can see what I'm doing more clearly. Okay, that's all the screws on the front part. I'll spin the chassis round and fit the remaining screws in the rear. Okay, that's all the screws fitted on the rear part of the chassis. It is looking much better, it's all nice and clean, and it's a good starting point for us to begin reassembly. Let's spin it back round the other way again. I have also cleaned up the other parts of the outer chassis, so uh, once it's all put back together again, it will start looking uh, very much better. Uh, it does look much cleaner. It didn't look too bad before from the outside, to be honest, it was just uh, very dirty. Um, there are a few scuffs here and there. I might take those out once it's uh, up and running. Um, but for now, this is as far as I'll take this. It's looking quite good. And in the next video, we'll look at cleaning up the electronics box. Uh, and then after that, we'll get onto the power supply and see if we can get some life uh, back into this unit.